see what Tom has to say about wild food, foraging and the idler lifestyle. Tom, take it away. Well, um, before I met you Robin, I'd only really foraged for, I suppose, elderflowers, um, blackberries and, uh, well, elderberries as well, um, and, and the odd mushroom. Most of which we got from the kind of woefully incomplete Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's River Cottage cookbook. Uh, which is good to sort of get you going, but it's sort of lacking on some accuracy and detail. Um, but even then, in my you know, sort of foraging early years, which was the day before yesterday, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious that nature's doing a lot of the work for you. There's something else we have around here is whortleberries, which is like a little bilberry. And they, they grow on the, on the windy coast of Exmoor, uh, near where we live. Um, it's just a question of making a countryside walk uh, into something productive and using what nature has already done for you. And I know as a uh, now hard-working vegetable gardener, actually what a lot of work it is to grow the vegetables that you want at the time when you want, in the place where you want. Um, and, you know, the results are fantastic. Uh, but clearly from a strictly idle point of view, the much more sensible thing will be to go foraging for what's already there under your nose. Um, and it is quite amazing to me that, you know, the elderflowers and the blackberries are completely free. Uh, and, and the process of harvesting them is so kind of healing and enjoyable in itself. As a novice forager, how confident do you feel to actually engage the countryside from a foraging perspective? Uh, do you feel safe doing that? Do you feel that it'll, it's, a, it's just one of those things that's too complicated to to ever get your head around? Or do you think it's something that, that could actually be really incorporated into your lifestyle? Oh yeah, it could definitely be incorporated incorporated into my lifestyle, without any doubt. Um, clearly, like any other area of husbandry, I suppose, um, you could study this subject for years and years and years. Uh, but we've already made a start. With, I mean, I didn't know we had chickweed and fat hen growing here. I, I mean, I know, I'd, I'd heard them mentioned in other books, um, but I've never sort of bothered to try to identify them. And I'd actually be quite nervous to identify them just from the book. Um, I wouldn't be sort of quite certain whether it was the right thing. Uh, it's not always easy to tell from a book. Perhaps you need to sort of check three books to, you know, to make completely sure. Um, but obviously the best way of learning something is by, is by your own direct experience, someone teaching you and showing you. Um, so I'm just thinking about how to remember in the future because if you don't do something quite regularly then you tend to start to forget it uh, but you know the, the, well we, all, we knew we had that the sort of chamomile thing the pineapple mayweed outside um, but I didn't we know that you could sort of eat it and put it into salads we didn't know as I said that we had this kind of huge amount of chickweed and fat hen growing everywhere um, we knew that dandelion leaves could be used in salads a bit but I've always found them a bit bitter and um, there's actually much more delicious stuff out there and the whole we actually surrounded by food um, so it's really exciting for that reason for the useful reason it's, it's free food uh, but also I can see it's rather like when we went uh, first took our rabbits our ferrets out hunting for rabbits um, and sent them down the rabbit holes well I was actually engaging in the landscape in a way that I hadn't done done before when we just walked through it and over it and we, you're sort of separated from it because it's it, you see it as you look at it as if it was a photograph uh, i.e. a view I, you're looking at something that's out there rather than being in it. Um, and so when we went out with the ferrets, I suddenly felt much more deeply connected to the landscape in a way that's quite hard to describe. Um, and that's the experience going out today with you, Robin. You know, you suddenly feel connected to it. You, you actually sort of feel your eyes are open and you're looking at it for the first time, actually seeing what's there, seeing what's actually under your nose. Um, which is actually an extremely difficult thing to do because you're not generally encouraged to do that. The kind of common perception of, of a lot of wild foods is that they're they're just survival foods, they're kind of last resort. From the flavours that you've you've tasted over the last two days, would you say that's true, that it's just grunt food? Well, I remember I was coming down on the train uh, back home from London one day, um, and I was reading Richard Maybe's Food for Free, and I bumped into a friend on the train, he also lives down here, and he looked through it and said, it's a pretty meagre meal. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be your entire meal, is it? Um, you're going to have it in risottos, and it's going to be a salad. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen big, thick, juicy things out there, really. Mm. Um, so it's an addition. But I, the, the point is, I think, you know, it's a, 
it feels like a medicine, um, more than the food that you can get in the shops, and probably more than the, the food that I'm cultivating as well. Um, because it's really sort of meant to be where it is, it's grown up naturally, so it's in exactly the right place at the right time. Um, but no, the, the, I mean, I can see that the range of flavours is actually massive. Uh, and, yeah, the fat hen and the chickweed were much tastier than I thought, and so was the pineapple thing. What about the kind of the estuary greens that we brought up? Yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. I mean, really, really good. Um, and it was rather well, like when we made our own jam from the sloes and blackberries and the hedgerows and the hips and the haws. Just one taste of it, you can feel the energy sort of filling you. Um, so, just like the cultivated plant, um, you know, those things have been sitting there soaking up the sun and the rain uh, all year round or for some of the year. Um, and that energy has now been given to you in the form of a plant. So, yeah, it was delicious, guys.